Gospel of Christ. our confession today in this service that your living water will fill every soul here today but by means of your living water burdens will be lifted out by means of your living water our hearts will be receptive to your word and at the conclusion of this synod oh God we will take the theme into every facet of our lives. That, Lord, we shall not be the same again. And finally, by your mercy, obtain everlasting life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. We thank God Almighty for the opportunity to be here to share with you in the joy of the Synod of Abuja Diocese under the pragmatic leadership of our new primate and his wife, the Most Reverend Henry and Mama Ndukuba. It is a great honor to be invited to be of this first Synod of a new primate in this diocese. We thank God for the opportunity and for the blessings of peace in our land. Brethren, we bring you greetings from brethren in Ibadan Anglican Diocese and to wish you peace, joy of the Lord as we continue to serve him. It's our prayers that together we shall all make eternity in Jesus' name. It is more than 30 years that I have had the grace of God to know Baba Primate and Mama Primate. And what we know of him is that he has remained consistent these past 30 years as a child of God. He has remained consistent as a great church leader and father. 
He has remained consistent as a great scholar of great repute, a teacher of teachers, a complete family man, an evangelical orthodox missionary. I congratulate you, sir, for what you have been, what the Lord has made of you, and what you continue to reflect, you and Mama Abuja. We want to thank God during those days in the city of Wusasa where God used you in that great theological college of which there, it, it, there is no a kind of it in the entire nation. Compare it with whatever theological college. We are proud to be a part of it. And for all that we received from you in that college during our days of little beginning, forever we shall be grateful because yours is an exemplary life, exemplary family, exemplary family, an example of what a child of God should be in Christ Jesus. Today I congratulate the entire chancery beginning from the chancellor on a successful synod all our clergy and clergy wives. We congratulate all synod delegates, members of this great church that is hosting the Thanksgiving at this time. I pray that as we continue to serve him, we will so serve well that we all will be rapturable in the name of Jesus Christ. Once again, I want to salute my mother-in-law, Mama Abuja. Nobody knows the details except few of us. God will continue to keep you for us in Jesus' name. <laughs> Building on the sure foundation. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11 to 13. And the golden verse is verse 10. According to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builder thereon. But let every man take heed how he builded thereupon. We thank God for the choice of this sin of theme at this time. Now your bishop, our primate, is a profound theologian, a serious one, straightforward theologian. So there's no doubt that as a scholar, teacher and great leader you would have had in his charge very insightful exegesis of the theme and other speakers would have said a lot already on this theme today as we close synod and give thanks to God our focus on that God shall be a call to action. What do we do thereafter? A call to action. All that we have heard this week. And all that we shall hear. It will be mere academic exercise. If they do not lead to tangible action. Positive action. And productive action. Action. If they don't lead to dull this tree, it will just be a wasted effort. Why do we say so? It takes action to build a house. No be talk talk. It takes action to build a house. Houses are built, no matter how small, by action. You can dream about fine houses, beautiful houses. You can pray about good houses, magnificent buildings. Brethren, you can even talk about it, you can proud yourself about it, but until you get up to walk, to take action, it will just remain a dream, hallucination. So, great houses are built by great action. So to provoke great action, so that we can build a great house, 
we may need to ask ourselves some tough questions. We may need to ask ourselves some uncomfortable questions. One great writer, Dan Sutherland, in his book, Transitioning, Leading Your Church Through Change, says, and I quote, All great leaders are willing to ask questions. End of quote. All great leaders are willing to ask questions. So as a people, we must rally around our leaders to answer the tough questions that challenge the church today. And because, brethren, unless we all bring ourselves to the point where we can face up to tough and maybe, maybe embarrassing questions, and we answer them square and fair, we cannot make good progress as a church. We will not even be able to make good progress as a diocese. Let us start from simple one. When we are asked to build, what actually is the building? What is the building? The building is the body of Christ, the church. Our Lord himself said in Matthew chapter 16 and verse 18, I will build my church. The gates of hell shall not prevail. And so all of us, we know that to build the church, our Lord walks through human beings. We have seen that fact in the history of the church. Even way back in the Old Testament times, to build the first temple in the time of Moses, God used human beings to build. Some people designed it, yes. Some built it. Some gave the resources that was used to build the house. In fact, the Bible tells us that at that time, people so gave willingly and bountifully that they had to be stopped from giving again. It's enough. May that begin to happen in our own time and climb in Jesus' name. It is found in Exodus chapter 36, verse 1 to 7. Brethren, our Lord uses human beings to accomplish the task of church planting and church growth. And one significant person he used in the early church was Apostle Paul. In the early church, Apostle Paul came out clearly as a great evangelist. And in the passage from which the theme of the synod was drawn, we see Apostle Paul talking about his efforts under God towards the building of the church. Paul said that as a wise master builder, he concentrated first of all on the foundation. What was the foundation that the Apostle Paul laid? It was the foundation of the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Apostle Paul, Bible tells us, brought the Corinthians to an understanding of what it meant to be a Christian. And not only that, through his preaching and his conviction of the Holy Spirit, a number of them came to accept the Lord Jesus Christ and became members of the church. And I want to ask you this morning, in how many of our churches are the leaders laboring to lay the right foundation? A good foundation of faith among the sheep of Christ today. Our theme says, building on the sure foundation. We must not assume. We must ask ourselves questions. With the way I'm doing church and Christianity, am I building rightly on the sure foundation? Listen to what Apostle Paul says. For other foundation can no man lay 
than that is laid which is Jesus Christ. First Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11. Which means that Jesus Christ is to, supposed to be our foundation. Every other thing that we shall build on our spiritual and material lives should be built on that Lord Jesus Christ, which is the sure foundation. You know, some foundations do fail. I'm not too sure whether the foundation of our nation has not failed yet. But Jesus Christ is the sure foundation. So after laying the foundation, Apostle Paul showed us that people can build upon the foundation in two ways. Or do I say for the purpose of this gathering, maybe some of us have been building on this foundation in either of the two ways. A builder can build with combustible materials or with non-combustible materials. In other words, realizing that fire is the most dangerous element that can destroy a house. The quality of the house can be measured by how fireproof the materials used to build it is. So, he says you can either erect a building that is combustible or a building that is non-combustible. Let us bring that grammar home. It is to say that you can either build a house that is corruptible or a house that is non-corruptible. That is what we see in verses 12 and 13. So what are those things that represent wood, hay, and stubble in the building of the house of God? So that we can avoid them. And when you look at the entire length of Second Peter chapter 2, it is devoted to the danger of building with wood, hay, stubble, at the corporate level. And I would admonish us to find time to study that passage of Peter privately. Peter opened the chapter by echoing the words of our Lord. But there were false prophets among the people, even as there were sh shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves sweet destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Peter says that the protagonists of this evil trend shall be easy to recognize. And when we recognize them, it is our duty to avoid them. Romans chapter 16 verse 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses Contrary to the doctrine which I have learned and avoided them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Brethren, those who found the embers of division in the church those who try to divide the children of God, they are not building for God. Those who give negative advices, they are not building for God. Those who try to bring palabra in the house of God, they are not building for God. They are building for the devil. That is the bitter truth. No one has a right to divide or scatter the flock of Christ. Whatever the reason may be. So brethren, let us tell them to keep all their good reasons in their pocket. And stop sowing seed of strife, sedition in the church of God. And one of the last prayers of our Lord Jesus Christ, you remember in John's Gospel chapter 17, that they all may be one. Anybody who is sowing the seed of discord amongst brethren is indulging in the sin that God hates with passion. 
Another very dangerous trend in the world today that we must watch out for is the danger of playing down on the severity of sin. Calling sin pleasant names so that the guilt of sin can go away. Rationalizing away sinful actions so as to silence the conscience of believers. Please, brethren, let us call sin by its name so that we can address it as we should. Fornication is fornication. There is no any other name. Adultery is adultery. It doesn't have any other name. Stealing is stealing. When we find fine names for ugly sin, we are looking for trouble. We are not building rightly. And we need to reawaken our sense of outrage against sin, against perpetrators of sin. Some decades ago, whenever we heard that someone stole government or office money, however small that money is, everyone will scream and shout. Now, let them steal billions. It looks as if it does not bother us again. In fact, we no longer call it stealing. We now have found nice words to call those actions. Misappropriation is no longer stealing. It is embezzlement. It is no longer stealing. It is diversion. It is no longer stealing. Let us call a thief by its name. He is a thief. Even if they steal it through contracts that is not executed. It's a thief. We see it every day. We hear it in the news. Is there any good news again in this nation? It is either insecurity, misappropriation, wickedness. Well, we must be careful. Our leaders too must be careful. We are experiencing COVID-19 now. It is just a small sign for God to tell us that I still own my world. I can do and undo. What shall it profit you if you steal money that you cannot use? You are creating wickedness and suffering unto the populace. What shall it profit you? You are supposed to be in charge and make life meaningful to all of us. But alas, it is diversion. Let us stop using fine labels for rotten behavior. What is happening within the leadership cadre in our nation is a shame. If someone can openly accuse leaders that, yes, you people took all the money. And then we begin to hear fine, fine grammar and diversion from both sides. But the thing is, with this COVID-19 warning, God can do anything. No? This money that you are converting, diverting, misappropriating, embezzling, that does not belong to you. Let's pray God that the time will not come when all of the money will not be meaningful again. You can load them in boxes and it will be useless. May we repent before that time comes. Your amen is not loud enough. So God is saying to us today, be careful how you build. Don't we hear the names of children of God in those things that are ungodly that is happening now? We do hear them. Unfortunately, but the fact is that they are not born again children of God. If they do, then we know that yes, the judgment of God comes. 
Be careful how you build. Don't join them to do evil. St. Luke's Gospel 21 verse 34. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffering and drunkenness and cares of life, and so that the day come upon you unawares. If they told any of us three years or one year ago that we shall be in the situation we are now, none of us will believe. But here we are now. We are being forced to discipline ourselves. We are being forced to carry on in humility. Brethren, how do we build the foundation of Jesus Christ in such a way that when the storms come, when the fire burns, our edifice of faith will not be consumed? How? Second Peter chapter 1, 1 to 18. We are in that passage introduced to the building blocks for the wise builder who seeks to build with gold, silver, precious stones. What does he need? He needs faith. Virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience, godliness, brotherly kindness, and charity. Brother Peter says that these building blocks are the secret of fruitful Christian living. They are also the secret of a church that pleases the Lord. And you will understand why when you look at the list of the fruits of the Spirit in Galatians 5.22, what they are. But the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. In other words, if we follow the advice that Apostle Peter gave us, our lives, my life, your life will be fruitful. We shall not only grow, we shall bear the good fruits of Christian living as children of God. We are talking about building properly, building spiritual lives that will stand the test of time. And so Peter says to us that God has foolproof formula that we can use to build a house of faith that cannot be destroyed. Brethren, our own part is to learn this formula and apply it intently that it becomes part and parcel of our very existence. No wonder God said to Joshua in chapter 1 verse 8, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. Brethren, when, we, when talking about building on a sure foundation, we cannot but talk about the special place of humility. If we build a legacy that will endure, humility is key. Humility is very vital. We must all learn to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And I confess that this is not easy. Because the way of the capitalist is the way of arrogance. They say, grab it with both hands, quote and unquote. They say, Assert yourselves, quote and unquote. They say, take no bullshit. But the Bible says, submit all of you one to another and be clothed with humility. And our Lord Jesus Christ is our perfect example that we must follow if we must live heavenly life here or not. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5 says to us, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, taught it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient Unto death, even the death of Christ. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus Christ, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. People are looking for all kinds of formula today for success in life 
and a ministry. They are looking for how to become great. How to be comfortable extremely. In the kingdom of God, this is the formula. The formula for the kingdom of God, for every child of God, is service. Serve and serve. And be humble. Be humble. Those two words are permanent. People of God, if we do the right things, if we sow the right seeds in our lives and in our churches, we shall not need to worry about the right results. And I believe God will see to it that our efforts are blessed. And the reason why our results are wrong is that we keep sowing the wrong seeds. We build with wood, with hay, with stubble, and we wonder why fire consumes our houses. Let us from this synod, in this decade of the reign of God, let us change the building materials and see if the results will not be different. Even coming in contact with those who are troubling us as leaders in the church, change the strategy. That person is not permanently bad. Maybe something is wrong with the system. Something is wrong with the focus. Something is wrong with the thing to be achieved. Change the system. Change the strategy. Change your prayer life. And begin to see result come. Let us change the building materials and see if the result will not be different. Let us from this synod begin to redefine action or the activity and see if the end result will not be different. As long as, brethren, my brothers, we will continue to take the work of church as civil service, we cannot make progress. We cannot make progress. It is civil service that may have a particular date for promotion. But in the church of God, they that wait upon the Lord, they that wait upon the Lord, that is our own portion. Yes, prayer and Bible study were the most important eternal activity of the early church. That is the internal activity of the early church, prayer and Bible study. But what was the most important outward activity? It was evangelism, missions, and outreach. So, brethren, if we want to build on the sure foundation, we must go back to how it began. How it was in the beginning. Missions is the heartbeat of God. Now, money has become the heartbeat of men. If not, a single person will not be able to corner billions how many years will he spend it? Will he live so long as to be able to steal it? If the spirit of stealing has not left you, why don't you steal small, considering others are there? But I'm not encouraging you to steal. Oh. Thief is thief. But where the thief is so, is so brave, courageous, one day that thief will steal himself. We're still There's no doubt. Mission is the heartbeat of God. Now money is the heartbeat of men. We must not join them, brethren, because we are children of light. And the Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Don't get me wrong. Money is important, but it must serve the mission of the church. It must not hinder it. Those who build on a sure foundation are those who are active in soul winning. In this city of Abuja, some sectors will need special evangelistic or missionary focus during this decade of the reign of God. The universities in this city where tomorrow's leaders are being prepared they will need a special focus with mission and evangelism. Building on the sure foundation we are talking about. The three arms of government 
where today's leaders are exercising power. Some of them, anyhow, we will need to reach out to them with the gospel imperative of our Lord Jesus Christ. The places where we can find foreigners so that they can take the true gospel back to their nation. The less cities, thank God for the great work of our founding fathers in this land, there's still more to be done. The less city, we are those who support and back up the big men live. They will need the gospel imperative, and so on and so forth. They all need specific and unique missionary initiatives. And we must ask God for heavenly patterns of strategies of ministry to these and many other fields that are ripe for harvest. Most importantly, brethren, the era of spectator worshippers is gone forever. No. Christian can no longer afford to be coming to church as if we are going to a movie theater. We cannot afford to come to church as if we are going to a nightclub. We cannot afford to be coming to church as if we are going to a stadium, football field. To relax. To enjoy. And to watch as others entertain us. We were not saved by entertainment. Jesus Christ bought us with his precious blood for his kingdom work. Let each one of us find our place and work for Jesus Christ. If you are here, just know that the Lord has already sent you as one of the liberals. Stop being idle. Join us in the work. Volunteer. To go, to support, to encourage our new leader as he unfolds his plans unto us. Listen to Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 20. The God of heaven, he will prosper us. Therefore, we his servants will arise and build. And what great thing about building for the Lord is that whatever you used to build for the Lord, gold, silver, etc., you are storing it for yourself. I am storing it for myself in eternity. So, if you sow greatly, you meet greatness. If you, in a way, not, then whatever you sow is what you shall meet there. So, let us sow for the Lord. As we close this synod with this thanksgiving today, under the leadership of our father, the primate, as Abuja Diocese and the Church of Nigeria Take off in this decade of the reign of God. As we get ready to build an incorruptible structure on the sure foundation which Jesus Christ has laid. Please hear the words of God as we find it in 1 Chronicles 22 verse 17. David also commanded all the princes of Israel to help Solomon his son, saying, Is not the Lord your God with you? And hath he not given you rest on every side? For he hath given the inhabitants of the land unto my hand, and the land is subdued before the Lord and before his people. Now, set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Arise therefore and build ye the sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the ark of the covenant of the Lord and the holy vessels of God into his house that is to be built in the name of God Almighty. And now unto God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the ascribe and all dominion and majesty be unto him now and forevermore.